This is Dr. Saad in front of you and today my topic is the autoimmune gastritis. As its name indicates autoimmune means our own immune response or own immune uh, system it uh, uh, affects or it damages the gastric mucosa. Now this autoimmune gastritis is the most common cause of the chronic gastritis after the H. parallel. Clear? The first is the as parallel then after as parallel is the most common cause is the autoimmune gastritis now we are moving on towards the pathogenesis of this uh, autoimmune gastritis that what is the pathogenesis of this disease basically before discussing the pathogenesis we have already discussed about the uh, means the parts of the stomach in the cells that are involved in those parts but i am repeating it once again we have the cardia, the fundus, the body, antrum and the parallels. Clear? Then uh, uh, we have the fundus and the body which contain the parietal cells. These parietal cells, they produce the intensive factor in the hydrochloric acid. And they also have the chief cells that produce the pepsinogen. Then we have the antrum and this antrum it has the G cells and these G cells they produce the Gastrin. What is the function of gastrin? The gastrin it stimulates the parietal cells to produce hydrochloric acid. This, this was a just quick revision about the cells and the uh, you can say parts of the stomach. Now we are moving on towards the pathogenesis of this disease. Basically what happens in this autoimmune gastritis there is the loss of parietal cells. Loss of parietal cells. Or you can say the loss of parietal cell component which are the proton pump and the intrinsic factor clear so loss of the parietal cells occur and why it occurs because of the cd4 positive t cells cd4 positive t cells they damage the parietal cells now as i told you that parietal cells or you can say parietal cells and the chief cells simply is that they uh, that this uh, autoimmune gastritis it affects the body as well as the fundus so the cells that are involved in them they are also affected means the parietal cells and the chief cells but mainly it is the parietal cells clear now as we all know that parietal cells they produce the intrinsic factor and the hydrochloric acid so in this condition when there is loss of parietal cells so there will also be the loss of intrinsic factor and loss of hydrochloric acid clear now what happens when the hydrochloric acid is lost it means that it will be resulting in a chloridia means complete absence of the hydrochloric acid and if there is intrinsic factor is lost what happens that vitamin b12 will not be absorbed vitamin b12 will not be absorbed and there will be deficiency of vitamin b12 clear this deficiency it may lead to the pernicious anemia this is the type of the megaloblastic anemia clear so in this condition what happens there will be deficiency of intrinsic factor in the hydrochloric acid obviously the pepsinogen concentration will also be decreased because of loss of the chief cells clear so now one thing here uh, i have to clear that whenever there is hydrochloric acid secretion is decreased clear so what happens that this decrease HCl concentration is a stimulus for the antrum for the G cells that's why whenever there is decrease acid secretion there will be increase in the gastrin production clear so in this condition also the HCl is decreased or there is loss of the HCl simply decrease acid production or complete loss of acid production which may lead to the increased gastrin production clear so gastrin will be increased hypergastrinemia will occur and this will be resulting in the hyperplasia of the g cells clear the g cells become hyperplastic clear now one thing here are uh, more that i have to clear that there is a difference between the autoimmune gastritis and the s parallel one difference that i have to make clear right now Basically what happens that in the H. parallel infection there is a multifocal or you can say patchy lesions of the you can say patchy damage patchy damage of the parietal cells and the chief cells now what does this patchy means 
Patchy means that this is your, for suppose this is your fundus and this is your body and they contain the parietal and the chief cells. Now in the edge paralyzed, remember in the edge paralyzed, there will be patchy damage. Means this part may damage, this part is damaged, this part is damaged, this is damaged. This is called as patchy damage. Means now this is this part, this one, it is normal. Clear? Means it consists of the normal as well as the atrophic parts. So atrophy is also occurring here, but the normal part is also present. So that's why what happens that the hypochloridia occur. In the S parallel, there will be hypochloridia. There will be decreased acid secretion. But in autoimmune gastritis, there will be a chloridia, complete loss of acid. Why? This is because now I'm telling you about the autoimmune gastritis. This is because there will be complete diffuse atrophy. Means whole the mucosa is diffusely damaged or diffusely atrophied. That's why the autoimmune gastritis, there will be diffuse damage of the mucosa, means complete loss of the parietal cells, complete loss of the chief cells, and complete loss of the parietal cell will be leading to the complete loss of the HCL and complete loss of intrinsic factor, which will be leading to the pernicious anemia. Clear? So this you have to remember, difference you have to remember. That's why the autoimmune gastritis is called as the most common cause for diffuse atrophic gastritis. Just remember this. Diffuse atrophic gastritis. Clear? This is caused by only autoimmune gastritis. This is the most common cause of diffuse atrophic gastritis. It means diffusely it is involving whole the mucosa of the body and the fundus. While in the ice parallel, that was multifocal and patchy areas they involve. Means patchy a, a, means damage occur. Uh, means there will be normal part as well as the abnormal part. Normal then abnormal. Normal then abnormal. That's why there will be hypochloridia in the ice parallel, but a chloridia in the autoimmune gastritis. This point is clear up till now. Okay. Now we are now after uh, discussing this all just summing up the characteristics of autoimmune gastritis what are the characteristics of the autoimmune gastritis characteristics first of all obviously there will be production of the antibodies autoimmune obviously immune system is activated antibodies will be produced against the parietal cells but remember that these antibodies, they are not pathogenic. Pathogenesis occurred due to CD4 positive T cells. But these antibodies, they are uh, important for the diagnostic tool. As they circulate in the blood, so that's why they are important in the diagnostic tool. And because of their circulation in the blood, they are not accessible to the parietal cells or you can say to the proton pump. So that's why they are not accessible to the proton pump and to the intrinsic factor. So that is the reason they are not pathogenic and they are only diagnostic. Then we have the second characteristic that is achloridia. Achloridia means once again I told you that complete loss of the acid. Then we have the decreased intrinsic factor, decreased vitamin B12 deficiency and finally leading to the pernicious anemia. Clear? So. Uh, we have done with the uh, antibodies, achloridia, a decreased intrinsic factor, and the last one due to the loss of chief cells, that is decreased serum pepsinogen. Obviously, pepsinogen is also lost because of the loss of chief cells. Clear? So these are the characteristics of the autoimmune gastritis. Now we are moving on to the clinical features. They are also very easy. Half of the clinical features we have already discussed in the pathogenesis. So here is the clinical features. What are the clinical features? Very easy. Anemia means pernicious anemia occur in the patient. Anemia, patient will be anemic. Vitamin B12 deficiency. Vitamin B12 deficiency, it causes the atrophic glossitis. This we have studied in our blood chapter in the vitamin B12 deficiency that 
our tongue in the vitamin B12 deficiency patient, the tongue becomes smooth and beefy red. Clear? This is atrophic glossitis. Then obviously, uh, we also have, yes, we have the neurologic symptoms. What are the neurologic symptoms? Obviously, the spinal lesions occur, spinal cord lesions occur, the lesions in our uh, cerebral dysfunction occur. Clear? There will be loss of the uh, dorsal and the lateral spinal tracts which will be leading to the imbalancing position sensations. Sensations are lost, many sensations they are lost. So these are the neurologic changes that are occurring in the uh, autoimmune gastritis. And mostly the neurologic changes they occur due to the vitamin B12 deficiency to pernicious anemia. Clear? These neurologic symptoms they occur due to vitamin B12 deficiency. So these are the clinical features of this disease. Now we are moving on towards the morphologic features. Morphology. Morphology is also very easy. It is affecting which area of the stomach? The fundus and the body. So the mucosa of the fundus and the body, it becomes atrophied, it becomes smooth, clear and there are rugal folds in the stomach. Those rugal folds, they are lost, clear. Then we have the inflammatory cells that are the macrophages. We have lymphocytes, clear. Uh, then we have, uh, means these are the macrophages and the lymphocytes are present and the, the atrophy of the mucosa occurred. You can also see the intestinal metaplasia here. Intestinal metaplasia may also occur in the autoimmune gastritis, the morphologic feature, clear. With this, we have completed our autoimmune gastritis topic. What we have discussed? We have discussed about the definition, about the pathogenesis, that how this occurred. We have discussed about the characteristic features of this disease, the clinical factors or clinical features of this disease, the morphologic features. Now you can easily differentiate between the uh, um, autoimmune gastritis and the s paralyzed related gastritis. Clear? Now we are moving on, uh, just finishing our topic of the gastritis. There are certain three uncommon forms of the gastritis that I am going to tell you one by one. Very uh, short topic, this is very short topic. Just I am writing it here. Three uncommon forms of the gastritis. Most common we have studied. Now we are moving on towards the uncommon forms. Uncommon forms of the gastritis. Which includes, number first, is iseno, iseno, philic, gastritis. Obviously name indicates there will be increased number of the eosinophils and this occurred due to the allergic reaction or the allergy to any substance. Clear? This occurred due to the allergy and it affects the antrum and the pyloric region of the stomach. Clear? This is eosinophilic. Simple. Just very short I am telling about this. Then we have the lymphocytic gastritis. Lymphocytic as its name indicates, lymphocyte will be involved, obviously it will be T cells or T lymphocytes are involved in this. And here, uh, it, this uh, lymphocytic gastritis, it can occur in any part of the stomach, means it can involve whole stomach. Here it is, uh, means antrum and the pyloris is involved, here whole stomach can involve. And when you are seeing endoscopically uh, the lymphocyting, you can see a small nodules with the central necrosis you can see in this, in the lymphocytic gastritis. Then uh, we have the last one that is the granulomatous gastritis. Any gastritis in which the granuloma is developing is called as the granulomatous gastritis and mostly this uh, is idiopathic and but mostly it is associated with the Crohn's disease. Clear? And uh, you can also, this also uh, affects in the antral region of the stomach. Clear? So these are the three uncommon forms of the gastritis. With this, our today's topic, or we have completed our gastritis topic, then now we will be studying the complications of the gastritis in our next lecture. Thank you so much, and if you have any confusion, any query, you can ask in the comment section. Thank you so much. Allah Hafiz.